Does anybody remember the ultra slim fast diet shake of the 1980s? You give us a week, we'll take off the weight. One of my junior high teachers, Mrs. Roberts, was into slim fast. She was supposed to be teaching us a course called communications, but nobody knew what that meant. So she'd sit on the edge of her desk, chipping away at a frozen ultra slim fast shake, and ask us questions about us, our lives, our ideas, our opinions. I loved Mrs. Roberts. She seemed so happy to be spending time with us, happy to be a teacher, happy to be alive. When I moved to the big public high school in my hometown, Santa Fe, I looked for more of that happiness, but my teachers there seemed kind of stressed out. The principals came and went, and of the 600 kids who entered ninth grade with me, only around 350 of us stayed around long enough to graduate four years later. So at the age of 18, about the age of some of you, I made it my life's goal to change that. I was going to create a happy education system. So I went off to college, Brown University, and found out there are already tons of great ideas on how to make schools happy, exciting places. All we had to do to create a happy education system was this. You identify the happy ideas and policies, you get them into the schools, and everything falls into place. So to do that, <laughs> To do that, I took a job with the U.S. Department of Education when I graduated. I began working with a, a team of high-level researchers to figure out what were the happy ideas and policies. We wrote the ideas up on some flip charts a few months into my internship and took them down into one of the unhappiest schools in America in the South Bronx. Set up the flip charts and got ready to present our ideas to real-life teachers. We did this on a Friday afternoon. Those are the teachers in the room, right? You don't present anything to a teacher on a Friday afternoon, except maybe a margarita, <laughs> or, or maybe a TED Talk. So the teachers trudged in, we began presenting our ideas, and all of a sudden one of them raised her hand and said, excuse me, I don't have a chalkboard in my room. When you're all done here, can I keep one of those flip charts? So much for that idea. I needed to understand what teachers and students really needed, so I moved back to Santa Fe. I began teaching in a startup charter school. My new approach to finding a happy education system was this. You create one happy school, everybody sees it, so they create happy schools, and you're off. <laughs> now, we did it. We created a pretty happy school, but after seven years of working in that happy school, I poked my head out of our charter school bubble and realized no one was really paying attention. In their larger education system, Teachers and kids were still dropping out of the system as they had when I was 18. So at that point, I tried two approaches to achieving my life's goal. Neither had worked. I was wondering if any of them would work when I met a man named Aaron Stern. Now, Aaron is the president and founder of a nonprofit organization called the Academy for the Love of Learning. He spent the past three decades helping thousands of people and hundreds of organizations learn how to learn, how to grow, how to transform. I told Aaron about Mrs. Roberts and my pursuit of a happy education system, and he helped me finally understand that what made Mrs. Roberts so happy was not some perfect policy. It wasn't that she was in the, the perfect school. It probably wasn't her slim fast shakes. What it was, was Mrs. Roberts came to class every day, not only to teach, but also to learn. She had a genuine interest in us and the students. And she pushed everything else aside and pursued that curiosity. Our lives, our ideas, our opinions. That type of learning, that's real learning. That has nothing to do with time or tests or, or outcomes. It's the type of learning a four-year-old child does. When we engage in that type of learning, it's actually a form of being happy. Which meant that there was another way to get to a happy education system. If we could wake up that type of learning, in the human beings who make the most difference as to whether our schools succeed or fail, the teachers. If we could pack our schools with happy teachers, then everything really will start to fall into place. I mean, everything will fall into place. <laughs> it's not just a theory. Since 1990, Aaron's been doing this type of work, waking up this type of learning in teachers across the U.S. with a program he created called Teacher Renewal. Teacher renewal turns professional development on its head. Instead of giving teachers a bunch of ideas, it gives teachers time and space and some shared experiences 
so they can begin to reflect on who they are as teachers and rediscover themselves as learners. With the Academy, with the Academy for the Love of Learning, Aaron's brought teacher renewal to Santa Fe, and last fall, I helped him facilitate it with a master educator named Patty Lee for a group of local school teachers. And some of them are here today, including Laura Cullen, who's over there. There's Laura. <laughs> Laura's a middle school science teacher in Santa Fe. She signed up for teacher renewal when she reached that point in her teaching career when she wasn't sure if she wanted to continue. Right? Everyone in here who's been a teacher, including myself, knows that moment well. Usually comes on a Friday afternoon when some intern from the Department of Education sets up a flip chart. <laughs> After one day in, work, in our workshops, Laura felt relief. After our second day of workshops, a month later, she felt renewed. She went back to her classroom, and instead of following her lesson plans, she followed her curiosity. She told her students, report back on your learning however you see fit. Be creative. She had no idea what to expect. Here's what she got. One student wrote an original musical composition that demonstrates the scientific principle of conduction. 13-year-old girl wrote this. The notes are transferring energy to each other. Another student danced her understanding of the same principle. The students loved it. The parents loved it. And Laura wrote us this letter saying, I have been set free. Thank you for inspiring me to become the teacher I was born to be. This is how we're going to get to a happier, more engaging education system. Policies and programs, they're important, but real sustainable change starts here. In education, it starts with teachers, but whatever field you're in, it starts from we as human beings allow ourselves to pursue our happiness by following our curiosity, by falling back in love with learning. So when you leave here, when you go home this weekend, when you go back to your job on Monday, Follow Laura's lead, or grab a slim fast and follow Mrs. Roberts' lead. Ask yourself, what next? What am I curious about? What do I want to learn today?